Linux enthusiasts have long been proclaiming the arrival of the year of the Linux desktop, and in recent years, thanks to the development of Linux gaming and the growing popularity of the Steam Deck, the Linux desktop is rapidly gaining attention, especially among gamers. For decades, Windows has been the go-to system for PC gaming, so it's natural for people to be excited about a capable challenger. I strongly believe that Linux gaming is on the path to continuous improvement, and even at this moment, it offers a great experience for many users. In this video, I'll share information that could be valuable if you're contemplating a switch from Windows to Linux for gaming. I'll do my best to avoid subjective opinions and provide accurate facts about Linux gaming. The first point may seem obvious, but many people may not have a clear picture of it. The entry barrier to Linux is extremely low. It's free of charge. Tutorials on installing Linux on your PC are abundant and the process is usually straightforward. Nowadays, we rarely encounter incompatible hardware, unlike 10 years ago when we had to search for solutions when a key component was missing a driver. Once you install the OS, getting Steam or the Epic Games Store running is also not difficult at all. However, Linux is still a distinct operating system and it takes time to get used to using it daily. You'll need to learn how to adjust system settings, install apps, find alternatives to some Windows-only software, and, depending on your choice of desktop environments, you may need to adapt your way of navigating within the system. You will also likely miss some things like game mods, since some of them are not supported in Linux, or require tweaking to make them work. Windows can be a headache when a certain OS update or driver update ruins things, and these issues can also occur in the Linux world. Just like with Windows, you'll need to learn how to solve these problems. For beginners, I strongly suggest choosing a more popular distro like Ubuntu, preferably the LTS version. You will be much less likely to encounter update or driver issues, and if something breaks, it is much easier to find solutions via a simple Google search. Rolling release distros like Arch may provide the latest versions of drivers and software, and bring some more performance in some cases. But they are not as beginner-friendly in my opinion. Developers don't necessarily spend time making their game work perfectly on Linux, and that's totally reasonable due to market size. If you absolutely need a certain game to run, it's best to check the compatibility of the specific game on ProtonDB.com. For example, the fantastic Forza Horizon 5, despite not being a recently released game, still has stability issues when paired with an NVIDIA GPU. Another important issue is anti-cheat. Many online games implement anti-cheat that isn't native or compatible with Linux, and there is pretty much nothing you can do about it. If, like me, you only play single-player games, then you have nothing to worry about. Some latest AAA games may not run before some updates or patches, so you have to be a bit more patient. If you have a large number of games in your Steam library, you most likely don't have to worry about this issue, because most of the titles should run just fine with little to no tweaking and you would never run out of games to play. The notion that Linux is the saviour of vintage PCs may come from countless articles about how people breathe new life into laptops that can't run Windows at all. They are not wrong though. Generally, compared to Windows 10 or 11, Linux desktops tend to be more lightweight, especially regarding system RAM usage. This means with limited RAM you can open more web pages in your Firefox browser, for example. In my experience, the Linux desktop is, in fact, snappier when doing everyday tasks like web browsing. But for intensive computing tasks like gaming, you can't simply draw such a conclusion. There are many performance comparison videos on YouTube, and generally, you would find games run more or less comparably well in Linux. Some may have a few more FPS, some don't. But in some cases, Linux can be a much worse system for older hardware. 
For instance, if you are using an NVIDIA Pascal GPU, which is the GTX 10 series or even older ones, gaming on Linux may not be your best choice. This is because these older NVIDIA GPUs can't play well with Vulkan, so as a result, VKD 3D Proton would perform poorly with them. This is going to affect DX12 and Vulkan games mostly, and that's the majority of newer games. Meanwhile, unlike NVIDIA, old AMD cards tend to age better in Linux, and this is part of the reason why people would suggest using an AMD GPU in Linux. If you're like me, growing up in the 90s and always have an interest in computer stuff, you may find making Linux work as intended amazingly rewarding. This is a totally subjective take, but I think many would share the same opinion. As much as I love my Nintendo Switch, sometimes I don't feel like gaming solely is enough for me. I love tweaking system settings, experimenting with different launch options to see how it may or may not improve performance, or even distro hopping. Doing such things is a great way to kill my spare time. I mainly work on my MacBook, so my desktop PC is more or less a big toy for me to mess around with and Linux is perfect for this purpose. I do invest many hours in playing games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Cyberpunk 2077, but I also spend equally as many hours tweaking this and that. The reason why I desperately want more people to jump on the boat of Linux gaming is that I have been a Linux desktop user for over a decade now, and I really wish it to be more mainstream so that I can finally completely get rid of Windows or Mac OS. As of now, because of the market share number, many companies such as Adobe won't bother developing a native version of their industry standard applications for Linux. With more gamers daily driving a Linux desktop, this situation may look better in the future, I just hope. But what I don't hope to happen is that people are completely disappointed by Linux due to their lack of preparation or unrealistic expectations. This is why I made this simple video. If you have different opinions, you're welcome to share them in the comment section. Thank you for spending your valuable time with me.